Today is going to be a magic day. All you know is all a lie All caught up in paradise Running away from everything real Everything that hurts to feel All you know is all that you put up To keep you from the truth The wall to keep out all the hurt Only to keep out all the sweat All along you thought that you Better off if all you knew was gold All along you've been a fool And it's getting old Well, that's the second chub, and I've only been here about half an hour, and that's one each. That's one to the boilie, and one to the pellet, but this is a, a lovely big chub, so I might have to weigh this one. Look, that there has still got all the feed inside the feeder. That's how quick that bike came. Bye. 
five pound, five pound two ounces. That is a bonnie fish. Five pound two ounces and it took the pellet. Oh, I can't believe it. Only been here half an hour, two fish. First one was a little bit smaller than this, but that's a lovely chub. Happy with that. Okay, finally, I've just had them two fish. Half an hour been here and wow, both rods screaming off. That second one, I was sure it was a barbel, but it wasn't, it was a five pound, two ounce chub. So I'm delighted. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be a good day today with the temperature being so high. Now I wanna show you the water temperature because uh, I've actually got a wee thermometer here and it's eight degrees in the air, but what is it in the water? Let's have a look. So, says I've had this in the water for about a good half an hour since it started and it says 3.9 it's 3.9 so that's very cold very very cold but the chub don't bother you still catch them even in the cold water let's have a look at my at my swim now the reason I've chose this swim today is because it's a little bit windy and with all that wind you need you need a shelter really and here I have a natural shelter behind me is a steep bank now that steep bank's going to shelter me from the wind um, I can't even hear the, the hum of the motorway from down here so it's really nice it's keeping me nice and warm so I've got my left hand and right rod three meters apart right in the middle is my landing net so should I get a take on my left rod I'll be able to go down there and land the fish somewhere safe. Should I get a take on this right rod, I'll just pop over there and land the fish there. And I've got the, the landing net just set in the middle. That's perfect. So no matter what rod I get, I'm not going to trip over anything. I know where the, rod, I know where the landing net is and it's going to be easy access, safer for the fish. And it's going to be quicker to land it. And that's perfect. And this is the bait I'm using today. As you can see, this is what I'm using in the feeder. Just a load of crushed boilies, different side pellets, and different boilies all crushed together. And then this is what I'm using to clog the feeder, which is just scalded pellet. Scalded pellet, but I've added a little bit of source liquid in there as well, and some preservative. And then that's my bait for one rod, that's my boilies, which have been glugging in the source. And there's the paste that I've made. And then it's also important that you've set up uh, somewhere safe to weigh any fish. As you can see here, it's flat surface. I've got a nice mat here to put the fish down on. I've got my net close to hand. I've got my scales, which are zeroed. They're all set up. And then just in case it gets windy, I've got a stake in the ground and just run that loop so that doesn't blow away. And there, if I'm kneeling down to weigh the fish, I've got something to kneel on, something comfortable. I've also got something to sit on. Well, it's just gone 10 past four and I've just had my third fish and it was another chub and this time it was on the pellet. So it was one all. The first fish I had was on the boilies and the second fish was on the pellet and now the third fish was on the pellet. So we just have to see now if the boilie will now catch me a fish and even up the score. But right now it's the pellet that's doing the business and it's only a little small size 10 mil pellet as well. A small size 10 hook. You can just see that the sun is almost getting time to set now. It's 20 past four. 
probably got another hour and then it's going to be full on darkness. So this is a very exciting time for me down here. Very exciting time. we have fish number four fish number four and that was on the pellet again so i'm gonna get this one straight back because my other rod's been bleeping away well i've waited for a good hour into darkness now and i've had a couple little beeps and little bounces on the end of the line but no fish at all so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pack up now um, water temperatures have been very low although the air has been seven or eight degrees it's been lovely but now that the sun's gone it's going to start dropping and I think it's just better to pack up now because the barbell won't come on the feed if, if it's this cold. The water temperature is 3.9 and 3.9, that's a kiss of death really for, for the barbell. But I've had a great day, it's been fantastic. I've had a great day for the chub and it just makes me more eager to get down here as soon as it stays warmer because the barbell will be feeding soon, so happy day. <laughs> I always leave my rods into last and look at this. It's chub number five. So I've had four chub on the pellet and I've had one chub on the boilies. You can safely say that the pellet has definitely outfished the boilies today. back down to the river Ribble. It's been two days since it was last down. The temperatures of the water was 3.9 Celsius. Very cold. I caught five chub. The biggest was 5.2 ounces. So I was really happy with that session. Unfortunately, I didn't catch any barbel. And I would probably put that down to the water temperature. And I didn't really see anybody else catch any barbel either on the social media sites. So that would say to me that it was too cold. So two days later, the air temperatures round about the same, eight degrees, and it was about three degrees overnight, no frost again, but I've just tested the water and the water is actually five degrees. So that's got up 1.1 degree. So it's about one degree Celsius higher, and that is very big in water sense, not, not really in air, but for fish, that could mean all the difference. A rising temperature can just switch the fish on. The sun is trying to peek out from through the clouds there. This is going to be a really good afternoon. I mean, I should catch a fish today. I'm hoping for a really good sized chub. Um, that's what I'm really targeting today. But I've always got that hope in the back of my mind that I might hook into a barbel. And if I do get a barbel this time of year, there's chances that it might be a really good size. Okay, I've just been sat here and a deer just came right down beside me. Check this out.
big chub. Happy days. Nice big long fish. Hooked in the top of the lip. Top of the lip. Three pound, 15 ounce. Well, I've weighed this chub and big long fish, but not as thick as the last one I caught there. But this one is a beautiful specimen. Isn't that gorgeous? And it weighed three pound and 15 ounces. And look at the bl lovely bronze flanks on that fish. Isn't that gorgeous? Big long fish, happy days. And look at that big mouth. Big hungry mouth. <laughs> right, time to slip this one back into the ribble where it belongs. Happy days. All you know is all a lie All caught up in paradise Running away from everything real Everything that hurts to feel All you know is all that you've put up To keep you from the truth The wall to keep out all the hurt only to keep out all its worth All along you thought that you Were better off if all you knew It is bitter. There's a Siberian blast and it's being dubbed the beast from the east and it is coming in. It's tried to snow already. We've had flakes of snow dropping this morning, but we've not got a great lot of cloud coming over yet. So I think we're going to escape any heavy dumps of snow, but it's a lovely place down here. Very still and quiet. I'm going to make my way down to the swim here. Where I'm going to be targeting the pike and the chub. A few degrees cooler and this would all be f freezing over. The lakes behind me are all frozen over. Now this wasn't running water, this would be ice. But just look at that, look how clear that is. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Look at it, gin clear. Well, if any fish are around, they're gonna be in the deeper water. They're not gonna be in daylight anywhere near here in this shallow, because easy pickings for predators, so anyone would be able to see them from up here. I just set two rods up. One rod I've put out for the chub, and the other rod out for the pike. So let's see what happens. If a pike takes that bait, there's a very minimal resistance. Very loose, very, very loose. So that's the first trap. And I've just cast one rod length out into that wee deep hole there. Second rod is just here. And that's set up, up into the air. And that's set up for the job. go down and see what temperature the, the river is. I've had the thermometer in there for about 30 minutes. Let's go and have a look. Two point eight degrees. 
The river is 2.8 degrees, that's very cold. Very, very cold. Just waiting for that sun to disappear. And then as it gets dark, that's my only opportunity I think tonight. As soon as that light goes, I might get a pike moving out. I seriously think that there's pike underneath all this scrub at the side of the river here. I think the predators will live under there. And as soon as the light goes down, they move out in search of fish. There's a deep hole, about a rod, rod length and a half, just out in front of me here, quite deep here. And this is where there's a lot of prey fish. So then pike and perch will all move out and they'll go straight for all the prey fish, which will be shoaled up in this area. And that's where I've dropped my deadbeat little sprat. And then the chub rod we've got just cast into the deeper part of the river. It's about one third of the way across. It's all bedrock on the other side. And that's just sitting in there nicely. One feeder load of pellets, I'm not putting a lot down. That's it, I'm just leaving that and seeing what happens. Happy days. Back up the bank. Anyone that's fished the River Ribble knows there's a magic time. And that's usually identified by the opposite bank turning a nice golden orange as the sun sets behind us. And you can just see the orange glow just appearing on them willow trees opposite. That's usually the telltale sign that you're about to get a fish. It definitely works in the summer. <laughs> Tonight it's it's almost freezing and it feels like minus three in the wind chill. I'm hoping that's actually a, a pike. It's just picked up my bait. I'm just going to watch it and I'm just going to pay a little bit of line out and watch it. Just paid a little bit of line out there. I'm just gonna watch the rod, see if I get any more indications on it. That was a definite bounce. You can just hear all the birds going to roost behind me, and there's the change for six o'clock. in the line rather than the end of your rod because that's going to move first. If you've got visual on the line, keep an eye on it. And if you see it getting taut, starting to straighten out, you know there's fish on there. And I'm just watching this and I can't see it moving at all. I'm also watching the rod now as the light starts to fade. I'm not going to be able to see that line. So I'll watch the end of the rod. That could have been a pig just, just Nudging, nudging the bait with its nose. So I'm going to sit in my hands. I'm not going to do anything until I'm positive that a pike has it has that sprat in its mouth. Now I'm only using a wee sprat, very small bait. Sometimes a pike will come in, and they'll just have a wee sniff, and they'll they'll nudge the bait. I've been watching some underwater footage, and uh, usually that's what happens. And they'll just sit there and they'll, they'll sometimes stir at it for a while until they get the confidence to just suck it in. They open their mouth and it gets sucked in the size of their mouth. I've just had a bounce on the pike rod again. I'm really certain that that's, that's a pike's lifted that bait.
on a smashing night and you wouldn't believe it the temperature we've got right now it's so cold but yet I've come out not expecting to catch anything and I've caught this wonderful fish just have a look at this 17 pound 6 ounce of river ribble pike tend to slip her back into the ribble So I want to show you what rig I've actually used to catch that pike. It's absolutely freezing. You can see the ice on the bomb. The mud is actually frozen to it. That's frozen solid. That's the rig. Little link swivel with a two ounce bomb on it, two and a half ounce bomb. That's running on the line. Two little rubber beads. And then I've just tied a swivel on, which was connected to some trace wire trace and that's straight down quite a long wire trace straight down to the single hook and all I did was hook a little sprat through the jaw with that and that's it and you know what these hooks are super sharp but that's it simple very simple but just look at the ice on the unhooking mat that's how cold it is That's all ice. It is absolutely freezing. So to catch that fish was an absolute bonus. Not just that, that was the biggest fish I've ever caught in all my life as an angler. And it's a 17 pound, six ounce beauty. And I'm just so delighted. That's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. To catch it in these conditions as well. The beast from the east, they said, don't go out stock up stay home stay warm no i'll come out and i'll catch a fish and i'm so glad i did that's my coat and it's absolutely covered in ice everything's covered in ice <music> I don't even feel the cold at all. I've still got the adrenaline after catching that big fish. But I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, and don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell. Feeling from me Let me show you all the way